I don't know about you, but I'm always looking for some sort of side hustle or some sort of way that I can get some use out of my tools that I've already spent money on and also some way that I can make some extra cash for the family. And recently I've been getting into woodworking pretty heavy. I actually am really enjoying doing it. But the problem is, is that I didn't have a lot of tools as far as woodworking tools go. I just mostly had mechanic tools because that's what I've always done. I did do a little bit of carpentry when I was younger. But if you're new here, my name is Brian and on this channel I like to do tool reviews, projects, tips, tricks, and more. So make sure you subscribe below and hit that bell so you can get notified whenever I go live or upload a video because YouTube will not tell you when I upload a video all the time. So make sure you hit that bell. And if you're already subscribed, make sure you hit that bell as well. A couple months ago, a company sent me out a cordless tool storage rack and it was just a little tiny cheap storage rack but I like the idea of it. So I got to checking out some sort of other options that anybody had out there. And there are some other options. There's also some other videos on YouTube of guys making different cordless tool storage units. And so obviously I watched some of what they was doing and I looked at what they were selling online. So I decided to try to make some because I thought, hey, these will probably sell pretty good. And I was right, these sell really good. I've probably sold about 50 of these. And I actually just make them out of three quarter inch regular plywood that you can get from any of your big box stores. If you were doing this for yourself, then I would recommend that you probably use birch wood, which is a hard wood, which is a better wood, which is an easier wood to work with. And with the price difference, it's about a $20 price difference, $20, $25 price difference. And it's actually probably worth it for me just to spend the extra money because the time that I spend sanding, trying to straighten this wood out, it'll probably even out in the end. I can make one of these in about two and a half, three hours, sometimes two hours. It depends on if I'm on a roll or not. Now, I've also accumulated a lot of tools thanks to this to be able to help me in doing these. So it's sped my time up considerably. But all of the tools that you really need is a drill and a circular saw, and you can do this. I make a variety of different cordless tool storage units that I sell, different sizes, and also ones that hold different amounts of tools. The one that we're gonna make today is actually an eight tool storage unit. I make seven tool, five tool, and 10 tool as well. And the sizes that I use, I'll put a cut list down below to try to help you out if you're interested in this, but this is just a plain Jane cordless tool storage unit and it's just meant to try to be sturdy, but also for me to be able to make fast and sell fast because I've found that people don't really need all the extra bells and whistles. They just want something dependable and cheap. So that's what I try to give them. So if you're out there looking for a side hustle that you can do, I guarantee that you could sell these in your area. I have had zero problem. I don't have any problem turning any over when I build them. I have people waiting on them all the time, all the time messaging me. And I only sell them on Facebook Marketplace. So I don't really have a wide reach of people that I'm, I'm reaching out to. Now, you, the problem is, is that you have to sell this in a local area because shipping these, you would never be able to afford to ship these and sell them to be able to compete with some of the guys on eBay that sell and ship them, which I still to this day do not know how they can afford to sell them for the price that they do with shipping because to ship one of these would probably cost 80 to to $100 in all reality. So it's pretty expensive to ship and I sell it for about 80. I sell them these from anywhere between 50 to hundred dollars, depending on the size. So the price to ship them would be double the price and I would essentially make nothing. So it has to be a local thing that you can do. Now I am also trying to figure out some sort of way that I can make stuff and be able to ship it and make money because that's where you're going to make a lot of money because you can reach a bigger client base. But for now, this is working pretty good for me. I've been able to accumulate a miter saw, sander, planer, table saw. I've been able to accumulate a lot. Now, granted, I have thrown some of my other money in with that as well, but I've made a good chunk off of these. Out of two sheets of plywood that cost you anywhere between 50 to $60, you can make three of, three of these that I sell for 70 to $80 a piece. So you're looking at tripling your money and granted you do have to spend your time in a, in a full day working an eight hour day, I typically can make three of these. So that's not a bad hourly wage. It's not really what I wanna shoot for because I really want a higher <laughs> hourly wage, but it works for now. I'm also getting into making more furniture, farmhouse tables. I make Adirondack chairs, picnic tables, and everything else. I actually did a video about doing the picnic table. So if you're interested in that, I'll try to link that up top. I haven't done a video about the Adirondack chairs yet, but I will get around to that. Most of the time spent building this for me is in the prep, cutting, sanding, cutting out the slots where your cordless tools go, 
And that's one reason why I bought the rigid oscillating spindle sander. It has an actual inch and a half spindle that I can use to help sand those out because that's what I cut them at an inch and a half. Now you could probably cut them at an inch and three quarters because inch and a half, it does fit about 99% of the tools, but the M12 drills, the handles are really fat on them and it doesn't want to fit into the inch and a half slot. So if you have M12, you probably want to just go up to inch and three quarters to cut your slots out. If you want to cut slots out, you could actually just make blocks and make your slots that way as well. I like cutting them out because it's faster and also I feel like it's more sturdy because it's just one piece with a bunch of different dividers in there. But to get started, like I said, I always cut out my pieces roughly with a circular saw, then come back to the table saw. If you don't have a table saw, then obviously you can just cut your finished pieces with a circular saw. But my mind can't get no rest. And to make this, I just cut one piece at 16, one piece at 10, and four and a half at nine and a quarter for this eight tool one. Some of them are only four at nine and a quarter. But once I have all those cut, I bring them over to the miter saw and I cut them down to size. Like I said, check below for the cut list. Once I have all the pieces cut, I start sanding. And when I sand with using this plywood, I typically start with a 40 or a 60 grit and then go up to a 120 or even a 220 grit at times for the final sanding. Once I have it completely sanded, then I'll start assembling it. When I start assembling it, all I do is take the bottom, which is the part with the slots cut in it, stand it up, 
and I glue and nail all of the dividers in. This whole thing is made out of glue and inch and a quarter brad nails with occasional inch and a quarter wood screws. You could just screw this whole thing if you want it, but I found that the glue and the brad nails with the occasional screws in some spots, I typically put the screws in the back to hold the back on and also put some screws into the top and also put some screws into the shelves and it holds really well. You probably should clamp it a little bit. I always do clamp it to let the glue set, particularly when you're putting the back on, the top on, and the shelves on, just to make sure that it's really secure. And like I said, I've sold 50 of these and I haven't had a single one say anything bad about them. None of them has broken down, so they are really sturdy. After I have all the dividers in, I put my middle divider in and then I put my top shelf onto the dividers. To get the middle divider right, what I do is measure whatever the top shelf is, whatever I cut that at, I try to measure over find that mark and line that up perfect. And then I'll try to make sure that it's square and I'll also use the end piece that I cut, stand it up, make sure that everything is nice and square before I finish nailing it. And depending on how big you're gonna make your shelves on the outside, you may wanna wait to put your other end piece on because you might not be able to reach your nail gun in there. With me, I was able to reach the nail gun uh, in a little bit, but I just go ahead and finish it with screws so that way I can just go ahead and assemble it. Once I have all the three pieces on, the middle divider, the two end pieces, the small dividers where the cordless tool is gonna go, I put, and the top shelf on, I lay it down backwards onto the back piece and I trace so that way I know where I'm gonna be nailing. Once I have it traced out, I just simply set it down, put some glue all over it, and I lay the back on, nail it, and screw it down. Now the shelves and the back and the top are typically the spots you have to worry about using this wood because this wood is not good and straight. And that's why I said using the birch wood would probably be a lot easier because that wood is a lot easier to work with. So you would save yourself a lot of time. And if you're making this for yourself to try to organize your tools a little bit, like I said, I would probably go with the oak or birch wood that you can buy at any of your big box stores. But if you just wanna make it out of this three quarter inch plywood, the total cost only comes to about $20. So it's really cheap to make and it will do a great job organizing your tools and also organizing your batteries. Once I have the back put on, I'll put my second shelf on and the height of that second shelf, I typically make around three and a half to four inches and I only want it big enough to be able to put batteries in because I wanna leave enough room on the top shelf to be able to fit a charger and a battery. So what I do is just cut a couple three and a half inch blocks in this case and I'll put them on the sides, put the shelf in with the glue already on the shelf and then I'll nail it in place and I always slide a block to the middle before I nail the middle to make sure that the shelf is completely level all the way across. Once I have that second shelf in place, I'll start putting my smaller shelves in. I didn't, I don't pre-cut the smaller shelves, which I could, but I just usually just measure them because it's not too big of a deal just to go back, cut them, sand them real quick and throw them in. So I'll take my measurement of what the inside is on the end and I'll make two shelves for that. When it comes to the height of these shelves, I typically make one about four and a half, one about five inches, five and a half inches, but you can make any of these shelves to any height that would suit your needs better. Once you have all the shelves in, now you're just gonna set your top on. I glue and screw and nail the top as well. Once you have the top completely on, and like I said before, the top does tend to bow using this, so I typically will put between four to five screws in the top. And that's all there is to it. You got your cordless tool charging station. Whether you're trying to make this for yourself to organize your cordless tools, or if you're gonna do like I do and try to make these and sell them, it is a really good side hustle. And if you're looking for a side hustle, I definitely recommend you try selling one of these. They will sell pretty good and it's relatively cheap to get into. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you go down and subscribe below because I got more videos like this, including projects, tips, tool reviews, and more. So I hope you stick around till next time. Stay real.